Adobe just dropped some new updates for After Effects and there's some great stuff in here. We've got handy new ways to navigate and organize your timeline, a massive improvement to track mats, and everyone's favorite export format is finally back. Let's take a look. Maybe you've already noticed this first one. It actually came out several weeks ago and I've seen a few people asking, hey, why do my keyframes look weird? So we have a whole new look for selected keyframes and there's a reason for that. It's because we now also have colored keyframes. The way you use this is totally up to you and it may change depending on your project, but it's really easy to apply. You just right click on a keyframe, choose label, and then choose the color you want right there. Now, obviously this will be helpful for organization if you have a lot of properties. This is gonna be great for things like character animation. But one thing that makes this really handy is the way you can select things. Here I've got all these pink keyframes for one specific property. Check this out. I can right click and select keyframe label group on selected layers, on all layers or visible. So this is pretty great. I can select all these pink keyframes across all layers. And if I've been smart about the way I set this up, this can be super powerful. If you wanna change your color options, just right click. And here in that label menu, you can also edit the label colors. This will just open up your preferences labels and you can customize all the colors right here. Now these are the same colors that get applied to layers or compositions. So if you change it here, it's gonna change it for all of those elements. So this looks like it's gonna be really useful day to day, and I've already seen at least one person making something completely bonkers with it, which is awesome. While we're talking keyframes, this next one may not seem like a game changer, but I'm always happy to see anything that saves us time. I'm sure you already know that J and K will jump to your previous or next layer marker or keyframe, and that's great. But when you have a lot of keyframes, a lot of layers, this can be a little tedious to step through every single thing but now you can use Shift J or Shift K to jump only to markers or keyframes on the selected layer or only the selected property. So this will totally ignore anything that's not selected, whether that's the property or the layer. And if you feel like you'd rather have this be the default behavior instead of needing the modifier key, you can always just go up to the keyboard shortcuts and customize that for yourself. This is a great example of the kind of little everyday quality of life improvement that makes a huge difference. So speaking of quality of life improvements, if you've been through our animation bootcamp course, you know the wonders you can achieve by diving into the graph editor, but having to manually separate the position property every single time gets pretty old, right? So if you come up here to preferences general, there's a brand new little checkbox here for default position properties to separated dimensions. Yeah. Now anything you create or import will have its X, Y, and Z if it exists, positions split up by default. Here's another small but really handy update. When you go to make a new composition, check out the presets. We've got new stuff in here. Finally, the HD options are right up here at the top. There's some ultra HD stuff in here. And right below that, we finally have templates for all the social media sizes that we need to make. While we're talking presets, I'm a huge advocate for them as a time saver, though I usually recommend you make your own. The ones that come with After Effects by default are aging, but Adobe just gave us 50 brand new ones, including some stuff that looks really handy. Just in case you haven't used presets before, I'll give a quick overview. Usually you'll wanna have an existing layer to apply them to, but there are a couple of them that will create the layer as you apply the preset. If you look in your effects and presets panel, right up here at the top, you should see animation presets. In case you don't, check out this little menu and just make sure you have show animation presets selected. Now you can twirl this open and there's a bunch of different categories in here. I'm just gonna choose shapes, elements, and DNA helix is one of the new ones, I believe. You can just double click that. And in this case, it'll create a layer with that. This is a pretty sweet little one. And look at all those fancy controls I've got over there. Nice. You can also find these by coming over to the animation menu. And if you know exactly which one you want, you can just choose apply animation preset and you can select the one you want. But if you want to look at all of them, choose Browse, and it will open up Adobe Bridge where you can browse these, often with animation previews. Here's another little example in Shapes, Elements, and another of these new ones is these handy little popping map pin animations. So great if you need those, you don't have to build it from scratch. Now the place where these are most handy is usually with text, and some of the new ones are really great. So I'm going to choose Text, Animate In, and then I'll scroll down to one of my new favorites, slide in from comp edge. Now you can either double click this or drag it over onto your layer or drag it onto the layer here in the composition viewer and check this out. Okay, great. The cool thing about these new ones is they have all these controls built into them. So right here, maybe I want this to slide in from the left and instead of by character, I want it to be by word. So let's check that out. Yeah, 
you know what? Let's make that from the bottom. Hooray for new presets. Like this is the kind of text animation that you're probably gonna use all the time. And it's built right in here. There's some other controls for easing and stuff like that. So make sure you get in here, check out these presets and save yourself some time, right? Now, as a longtime After Effects nerd, this is the one I'm most excited about. We've gotten a whole new way of working with track mats, which honestly revolutionizes the way that you'll be able to use them. This is going to save a ton of layers and a ton of time. If you're a more experienced user, you might notice that the track mat column looks just a little bit different. For you folks that aren't as familiar with track mats, I'll give you the quick version here. Let's say that I want to have this circle only visible within this blue rectangle. I could come down here and on the circle layer, since the skewed rectangle is right above it, I would just tell it to use that as a mat and see now it's trimmed off right there. In previous versions of After Effects, you'd have to keep these two layers together or else it breaks that relationship. But now you can actually move this and it still retains that relationship. So even just that is already really great. Let's just undo. But the thing that's so game changing here is that now multiple layers can use a single layer as the mat. And again, it can be located anywhere in your layer stack. So maybe I want this rectangle to use this backing box as its mat. And so I can either use the drop down here, backing box. You'll notice it does by default turn off the layer that becomes the mat. But in this case, I want it to still be visible. So I'll just turn that back on. And then I want the circle to use that as well. Maybe instead of the drop down, I'll use the pick whip and just point it to the layer I want it to use. And then I'll point this text layer to that as well. And now you can see all of these layers are only visible when they're within that backing box. Nice. Uh, so I have this paper texture here. Let's move that up to the top. And maybe I don't want that to be over everything. That's a little much. Maybe I want that to only be visible on the backing box. So I could do the same thing there. Or maybe I want that to only be visible on everything that is outside the backing box. So there's two little switches here. And the second one inverts the mat. So now this is only visible on things that are outside that backing box. But this paper texture layer can actually be above all of these other ones, but be matted so that it doesn't show on this shape. Pretty handy. I'm gonna go ahead and disable that so I can show you one other thing. If you want to use luminance mats instead of alpha mats, which is what we've been doing here, I have this black and white gradient sitting down here at the bottom of my composition, which is probably where I'm gonna leave most of my mats now. If I want this paper texture to use those black and white values to determine where it's visible, I'll set that as the mat. And then right here, instead of alpha, if I click this, you know, the icon changes to this little stair step and you can see it's using the luminance values. I can toggle that invert switch. And this is probably what I want. So it almost creates a little bit of a vignette for that so that it's not quite so heavy in the middle. And now we've got this lovely little track mat set up. And that was super easy to do. We don't need a separate mat for every single layer. Huge improvement here. Just for one other quick example here, I have this text layer, and then I have several of these wacky textures that I downloaded, and I want those to each show just in one letter. So you can actually do this all at once. I'm gonna select all of these, and then just point one of them to the mat, and look at that. Now, all of these textures are using that text layer as the mat. Like I said, this is a pretty huge update to track mats. So if you already know how to use them, great. If you're a little newer to them, stay tuned because we'll have another video out soon to do a much deeper dive on this new workflow. If you've been watching this video and realizing you don't have any idea what some of these features do, maybe you should think about investing in a more structured way to learn After Effects. School of Motion's After Effects Kickstart is a comprehensive interactive course that will get you really comfortable working in After Effects in just a handful of weeks, whether you're brand new or even if you've got a little bit of experience but have realized you still need to learn some of those fundamentals. All right, no matter what level you're at, this next one's gonna be exciting. It's like your best friend moved away years ago and they're finally back. Are you ready for this super in-depth demo? That's right, H.264, the delivery format that basically everything wants is again native right here. You can export it directly from After Effects. So we old timers remember when this used to be here and it was really nice to have, even though the way it was encoded wasn't great. And then they removed it a couple years ago, which was really Apple's fault. But hey, now we don't need to talk about that anymore because it's back. Yay. Thank you, Adobe. Those of you with very sharp eyes may have noticed this weird little test tube icon up here. And that's because I've actually been filming this in the beta version of After Effects. 
Several of the Adobe apps have public betas that you could be using right now. They're actually right here in the Creative Cloud app. And if you look right here on the left-hand column, under beta apps, you'll see any of the apps that are available to you. You can install these alongside the current version, so you don't need to have any risk there. And if you want to try out the new stuff and give Adobe feedback on those features before they release into the public version, this is how you do it. One of the big ones right now is the Properties panel, which is going to be pretty familiar if you're coming from Photoshop or Illustrator. You've got this one panel right here that can show you everything going on in the layer. You can change stuff. You can make keyframes right in here without having to dive into stuff in the timeline. But if that's not exciting enough for you, you might check out this other feature that just came into the beta. That looks like a pretty big deal if you ask me. So what did you think of these new features? Let us know in the comments which ones you're excited to use and which ones you want us to make more tutorials about. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.